Well, I'm out here at Tractor Supply. I'm uh, going to run in here and get the chicken feed and um, just see what they have in here. Our Tractor Supply is not real big, but uh, you never know what they're going to have. And I'm just going to run in here real quick and see what they have. I thought I would just make a video because I'll do a haul if I pick up anything. Well, there's the garden trellis that I need. I think I'll pick up two of those. This is my cart coming out. They did have a trellis. I love this white one. It was $29, but I really liked it. You're watching Much Ado About Something, and I'm Donna. Well, I made a tractor supply run yesterday to get those few things that I told you that I needed in my last video. In my last video, a work day in the garden. Well, it's another work day in the garden today. And I was able to find the trellises that I needed. I had to pack them in my van. I mean, in my car. This is my favorite one. I really like the way this one looks. It was a little bit more expensive than these two. So I got two of these and one of these. This is for that clematis that's growing in the rose bush. Of course, I got the chicken feed, and you won't need to see that, but I also got this fungicide. And this right here is what we're needing it for, the black spot. And this is mostly copper. I think I'm going to go ahead and have one of these drinks this morning. Okay? Okay, if you remember in the last video, I showed you this clematis that had jumped over here near this rose bush and it needed its own trellis. So I was able to pick this trellis up here at Tractor Supply. And now I'm going to put this thing where I can get this tree, uh, clematis to grow up it. Got a big rock down here. Now we're going to tie this rose, this climbing rose bush up right here once we get this clematis off of it. Right down here is the clematis that we're uh, going to trail up, trail us up this. Remember, I told you clematis are very fragile. They are where my clematis are anyway. So we're going to stick this trellis right here. We're going to get it where we can get it. Okay? Okay. Going. Okay, we got this um, trellis down he in here in this, near this clematis. If you get a little closer, you can see there's something been nibbling on the clematis. We might have to use a little bit of uh, seven dust, even though we don't like to use pesticides. We might have to use some neem oil or something. It looks like it's chowing down on it pretty good. Now, what we're going to try to do is not hurt this thing, this fragile vine, and try to get it to go towards this trellis.
You can see it's still got some of its rosebush holding on to it. It was climbing up the rosebush. It was reaching for whatever it could find. Now I know I can dig clematis up and I know I can root clematis and put it anywhere I want to root it, but it's came up here naturally. It was up here growing on a bed frame and we took the bread, bed frame down and this is what's from that, uh, the remainder of our clematis. So I like where it chose to grow and I'm just gonna try to help it right here by putting this trellis here. I use I use string sometimes, but these tiny little uh, ties, these, these are good too. So I'm just going to kind of aim it that way. And if it needs to be tied somewhere, then I'm just going to lightly and gently do that. It's intertwined amongst itself here. So I want to be easy here. I don't want to break it. But I do want to put something that will help guide this thing up its new trellis. It's already got some buds on it. This thing will be blooming soon and I'll be able to show you this. Okay. We were discussing how I have black spot on my roses. These are my climbing roses, and they've been planted here. They've been here for more than 35 years. So I don't want to lose these roses. I have some black spot on these roses, and it showed up about five years ago. And I've been combating it. And what I do is I go ahead and take off as many of the infected leaves as I see. The longer you leave it on here, the worse it's going to get. And I just get a baggie and I take off as many of these infected leaves as I possibly can. And I'm going to seal them up in this baggie and put them out with the garbage. I want to eradicate this fungus on my rose bushes, on my climbing rose bushes. This may seem time consuming. And the earlier you get it, the less time consuming it'll be. But I don't want these leaves falling down around the base here and collecting down there and spreading this disease even more. Because it not only gets on roses, it can get on other things too. And I'm trying to eradicate it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to get off as much as I can of this black spotted infected leaves and put them in my baggie. And then I'm gonna spray with this fungicide. This copper fungicide that I picked up at Tractor Supply. I'm gonna mix it according to the label directions. And we're going to spray these rose bushes down to try to prevent this from spreading and from uh, hurting these rose bushes. These rose bushes already have bloom, uh, buds. Before long, they'll, they'll have beautiful blooms. And so we want to catch this as early as we can. If we don't spray this, if we just left it, it would attack all of the leaves. So all these leaves would fall off and it would just be like a bare... Uh, vines here with no roses on them i mean no leaves and we're just trying to keep this from spreading and get this as early as we possibly can okay okay donald's going to show you how to mix up this uh fungicide he's going to spray the 
rose bush for me since he's a lot taller than I am. So the first thing we do is we put the water in the sprayer. So that way you're not causing anything to foam or bubble up. Okay, using this one gallon sprayer, he's going to measure out the fungicide. He's got it measured out here. Two ounces per gallon. And what we like to do to our uh, fungicide or anything that we spray on our plants, which is not much, we try not to spray anything on them, but we like to add Dr. Bronner's soap. It's, as, it's good to have in your, uh, or any Castile soap that you have on hand, it's good to have in your gardening bag. By just putting a little bit of Dr. Bronner's soap on it, it helps um, this fungicide to hold on to the leaves better and helps it to act, react better. He starts at the top and goes down to the bottom. I'm trying to put it to a mist, honey. I want to mist it real good underneath. Oh, okay. Yeah, get it, coat it thoroughly up underneath yeah. and the top. I think we have about four of these rose bushes we have to spray like this. Get up underneath it. We have to replace our flag. It's got pretty beat up with the windy weather. And Walmart has the best deal on those flags. I saw those flags for $8.95. Tractor Supply had them for $35. So it's a big difference. The wind's starting to pick up, so I need to get the wind to my back. Yeah, keep the wind to your back. And you don't want to spray this when it's uh, they're calling for rain because then you'll spray it and then it'll just wash right off. And Donald's doing it because he's about a foot taller than I am. And that foot taller can make a difference when you're trying to reach up and spray, can't it, Donald? Yes, it makes a difference. It's dripping down real good. The soap you add will make it stick. Well, in my future garden, I and mean, in my past garden tours, I've shown you how my clematis has just jumped all over my garden. I do finally have a piece here growing up this bed, which was where it was originally in the garden design. 
the clematis was supposed to grow on this bed. But as you can see, it's jumped all over the yard, all over the garden here. Well, I'm going to tell you, the clematis is such a beautiful, beautiful plant that I'm not going to risk digging it up and killing it right now at this time of the year. I'm going to go ahead and put a trellis where this thing is growing. And I'm going to go ahead and train it up here. And as you can see, this trellis that Donald and I made a few years back also has a clematis growing up it. So I'm going to take one of these trellises that I got at Tractor Supply. They're temporary to a point. They're easy to move. When you get them put up, they're not permanent. You can uh, make adjustments to where you want them. Now my garden's going to look a little uh, wary. It's going to look a little haphazard having these trellises just put in random places wherever the plants come up. But that's something I'll work on later. Right now, in an effort just to get these beautiful things growing, I'm going to go ahead and take care of them right where they're at. And then I'll work on doing a garden design later when I'm planning on where to move them. Now, I might have let this go a little bit too long. It's pretty intertwined there, and I'm going to have to work a little bit to get it separated so that I don't hurt it any. If you're too harsh with this thing, if you're too rough with it, when you're out here, these fragile vines, you'll come out here and they'll just be dead. They'll be broken and uh, they're not easily, uh, you know, worked with. I really let this one go a little bit too far. I should have got out here and trellised it up earlier. Now I'm just gently pulling it through this trellis. This, uh, it may seem a little unsturdy, but Donald said he was going to come back and put a piece of rebar and sturdy this trellis up a little bit. So we're just taking this and getting it, uh, worked apart a little bit and ideally we would uh, get to this before it got to this point. Ideally we would get out here and work this clematis when it was really tiny. I try to put whatever kind of uh, supports. A lot of times I use string, uh, but these zip ties, they have really come in handy. They are plastic, but I, I use them because uh, they make the work uh, easier. I can just snip them off and throw them away when they're uh, when this thing catches hold to this trellis. I'm basically just guiding it up here and until it catches on its own. That's really all you're doing. I, I ain't putting it up like this. And I like to to use a little zip tie or maybe a piece of twine, all natural twine. I like to do that uh, to keep it on this trellis because we have strong winds here. We have some pretty good storms. I keep this kind of as loose as I can. Give this thing plenty of room to grow.
it was all crowded up there and it was hard to see how much of this clematis is actually here but there is a good amount of this vine growing here hopefully we can get this thing going up this trellis and I'll be able to show you some beautiful flowers on this and of course we've got one growing here it came up where it was supposed to Dawn's going to dig up some of the elderberry that we've got coming off of our original bush here. We've got two little shoots that'll be good to start in a pot to give us a gift or to move on, you know, around the property. This is what you do so that you're not buying new plants all the time. Instead of just cutting these down or spraying them, he's digging them up. We're going to repot them, and then there you have another elderberry bush to be used or to be given away. I don't think the pot I got was big enough. We'll have to see right here the side where it come off that big one. coming off the parent plant. We wanted to dig this whole big elderberry bush up. We may have to do that this fall and relocate it because uh, it'll just continue to put off these little babies and it's out here in the front flower bed, which at the time was a good idea because we didn't have a place to put elderberries. But now we're thinking maybe we need to put it in a different area. Maybe move it to the back. Prolific. They grow pretty prolific. prolific. So if you plant elderberries, put them where you know you want them to grow. Donald the problem I'm doing is I, I find everything on the side of the road or when I'm traveling. <laughs> yeah, that this, uh, this elderberry... Uh, bush here we actually ordered I can't remember where I ordered it from but we do have some in the back that we stopped and got cuttings off of going down the highway they were in bloom and we recognized what they were and we just stopped and got some it wasn't uh, on um, public uh, land it was just there on the edge it was on somebody's um, property and we just took a few cuttings now we'll keep these watered good they'll be ready to pass along to somebody else that needs some elderberries check the little uh, cuttings I got going in this little greenhouse they need a little bit more water. I want to keep them moist. I'm just going to zip them on up in here.
on the side of the house over here, it's been a good area to uh, to have these things. We were just noticing this white azalea over here. It's on the side of the house. It doesn't get much attention, but it's pretty. It's pretty against the blue. And the snowball bush, it's got its little blooms coming out. They're still green, but they will turn white. And I'll, I'll be able to share those with you and show you those when they bloom. And they'll be beautiful against the dark blue of the house. So there is a plan. There is a design plan against all of this intense labor. It's just taken me quite a bit of time to get it executed. It's uh, not been a fast and quick process. I'm just going to drill some holes in this five gallon bucket that we've saved. By drilling the holes, it'll be good drainage and we're going to recycle this five gallon bucket. Now this is our corner compost. This is when he empties the kitchen compost. This is where it goes over here in this corner compost. We're replanting this uh, snowball bush that he dug up. It is a little weak in the trunk there. So he's just going to go right on ahead and uh, put it down in there pretty deep so that it can have some support on that trunk. And it won't hurt this at all, this bush to be planted this way. Making use of that good compost, all these kitchen scraps, you see the eggshells that hadn't quite broke down in there yet. We'll have uh, another snowball bush. We have the one that I've had in the pot for about three years there in the front. We're going to repot that this year here in the backyard. And then this one will be ready to give away to somebody. We'll let it get take good hold in this uh This repotting that we're doing for it here. But look at these pretty blooms. Look at this thing. They're a little green now, but when it, uh, here in a few days, it'll turn out to be a beautiful white and it'll look like little snowballs. It's the little, little uh, blooms, clusters, not the real big ones. I don't think I've shown you this garden. This garden is right here when you come in the backyard, the garden gate. We have a little wall, rock wall here too. It's time for it to be redone also. It's got to be taken down and restacked. But I won't be getting into that too, uh, too soon this year because I've got a lot of other stuff going on. But we've got a rose bush there. We've got Donald's honeysuckle. He loves honeysuckle brings back memories of his childhood and so that's what your garden should be the full of the things that you love and of course I love wisteria and I know that it's a uh, an invasive plant and we try to keep it trimmed back Donald calls it Medusa he tries to keep it trimmed back but when this thing blooms it is absolutely beautiful I think he got out here and trimmed it already so I'm not sure if we'll have any blooms on this one but just a few here is when you trim them back at this time of the year, you lose your blooms. But maybe we'll have some on this one over here on the other side. Not every year is a good year for your blooms. We'll just appreciate them when we have them. But this gives a certain amount of privacy here in this city backyard and but this little area does need some work. We've got to get out here and uh, organize some of the things we've got going on. I wanted to uh, plant flowers in this wheelbarrow. So I'm gonna leave it here in the garden and fill it full of soil. 
and plant flowers. Well, we've got a few things done in the garden today. We got these clematis trellised up. They'll be showing off for us before we know it. We'll have some beautiful blooms and I'll be able to share those with you. We've got a few things repotted. And there's a lot more to be done in this garden today. There's a ton of work that needs to be done in this small little garden. Things that need to be replanted, repotted. We've got to paint these shutters today. Donald thinks it might be too much pollen all over the place, so but we're going to try to do what we can. I'm going to wrap this video up because, let's face it, it could be an endless video <laughs> with all the things that we've got going on out here today. I thank you for joining me today, and like always, until next time.